Karena sekarang kita lagi berada di Black Owl Peak ya sebenarnya untuk acara launching uh, Crescendo ya di anniversary yang ke-20 tahun. Nah, di samping saya ini ada tamu istimewa jauh-jauh dari Eropa ya. Nanti kita akan perkenalkan juga dia datang dari mana. Nanti juga kita akan uh, berbincang-bincang khusus ya. Apa sih yang ke uh, acara apa? Kenapa dia datang ke sini? Nanti kita akan berbicara juga dan pasti akan menarik karena ini akan menjadi satu pilihan uh, sistem audio yang bisa Anda dapatkan juga di Indonesia. Hai, hello. Hello, uh, my name is Edi Susanto. I'm from Cartens Audio Jakarta. Hi, Edi. Okay. Yeah. Nice so, to meet today, you. Uh, we are in a nice place, right in the north side of Jakarta. This is a nice bar also. Can you introduce yourself? Where you from? And then, why? What is the occasion you come here? here? Hi. Yeah. My name is Marian Gado. Um, I'm from Sweden. I'm living there for the last seven years. I have been working uh, with Car Audio for the past 20 years. And with this occasion, I'm yeah. visiting Jakarta for the 20th anniversary of uh, Harmony, yeah. Harmony and yes. Crescendo for the launch of the new products. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I think you are not here only for the anniversary, right? Yeah. I think you have something that you are hiding, something that we are looking in so interesting because I met you in Salzburg actually. And then can you tell about our about yourself and then what is you what is you doing and then what are you going to introduce for our market here? Yes, I, I'm visiting for this yes. event and also trying to meet people and speak a little bit more about my upcoming product. Yeah. For the first time when you saw it in Salzburg, we, we wanted to show as a prototype yes. and as an idea. Yeah. And we also wanted for the first time to compete with them. We had no idea about the good results yeah. that we're going to get, so we were happy about that. Uh, but it seems the product yeah. works really well and uh, I want to introduce to the market the Time Machine lineup speakers. So we are a company from Sweden, Art in Motion. Okay. We have been working in audio for the for the past 20 years, 20 but years. also in interior design. Okay. Uh, for example, I have been working personally with company Koenigsegg and, and other hypercar companies, and this has started from actually manufacturing interiors and installation for car audio. So it, it always has been about car audio many years ago. Then our work for installation was really nice and we captured the attention of people regarding more design and uh, let's say upholstery and interior okay. upgrades. So it went more toward that direction for the last 10 years. And uh, I wanted to go back to audio. So I think this is a very good way by introducing our new products. Okay, kemarin Gadau is dari sebelumnya itu kerja di Kunixek ya. Jadi itu merupakan uh, salah satu pabrikan otomotif yang cukup bisa dibilang high end level up ya. Jadi dia kerja di uh, interior upholstery ya. Jadi di bagian interior dan dia punya perusahaan namanya Art in Motion. Art in Motion, right? Yes. Okay. Art in Motion ini nanti sedang menge mengerjakan satu proyek dan dia mengeluarkan speaker itu di namanya Time Machine. I got the uh, opportunity to listen to his car, yes, and then he also got the champion in Euro, Euro Emma Euro Final, yeah, yes. in uh, Master Master Limited, La Master My Limited, and Master Unlimited, and Master Unlimited. Jadi juara satu di Master Limited dan juara satu juga di Master Unlimited. Can you tell about us how can you uh, interested in doing some speaker design? I have never thought that I would be a speaker designer as well as I never thought about interior design. Okay. It all started with my passion for music when okay. I was very young. Yeah. So I started into car audio because uh, doing music in, in, in a home environment when I was living in a normal apartment okay. when I was little, yeah. it was very noisy, <laughs> bothering the neighbors. So I, I realized when I was like 15 years old, car is very interesting yeah. because you can play loud, you can move around at the same time. Of okay. course, I didn't have a car. I was too young to yeah. have a car, but I started doing for friends and, yes. and colleagues. And then that developed as a big passion. And I think it was easy to, to become my passion because I was very good at it. So yeah. I got more and more customers. Okay. Um, very early, like 20 years old, I moved from my hometown to the capital of okay. Romania, Bucharest. Bucharest, okay. It, because all my customers were from Bucharest, they had to travel a long way just to get to me and, and work on their cars. <laughs> so I, I ended up uh, doing more and more interesting sound systems. Uh, we, we managed to, to win 
a Euro European champion yeah. in 2008. 2008, okay, yes, so long time ago. Yes, I, I, we started competing in mm. 2005 okay. for the first time in Euro finals and then 2008 we got the championship. But I was always looking at more expensive cars and how do you get to install sound systems in those cars mm. where it was easier to get a higher budget for the sound system but customers were always afraid about messing their design yes. and not so. Uh, my idea was that I have to start stitching with a stitching machine. Okay. So I bought a, a cheap stitching machine okay. from the beginning, a yeah. second hand one used. And I started doing that and I had no experience. I tried with many other okay. shops and I yeah. didn't get the quality that I want. So by improving more and more, uh, more of my customers were coming in the shop for the interior design yeah. part and then seeing the speakers and the sound system were getting interested for the sound. So this way I got to do sound systems even better, yes. even, even more to a higher level. Uh, so then due to this uh, interior design and our work, okay. we caught the attention of bigger, bigger customers and also Koenigsegg. Okay. That's how I, I got to move to Sweden. So I stopped Car Audio for three, four years yeah. while I was working at Koenigsegg mostly with interior. And then I, I had the chance to calm down. I did, I did not have the pressure of, of uh, working and, and leaving from Car Audio. Okay. So Car Audio was only a passion yeah. again. So I started looking on the market. I remember um, I ordered over 100 sets of speakers from different manufacturers, just looking at them and trying to understand how each one works, uh, listening to them, yeah. creating a, a, a setup where I have my reference okay. system so I can... And, and I started getting some, some feedback from all of this mm -hmm. testing. Started understanding what, what makes a speaker really good uh, for me. Yeah. But then I, I felt like nobody's pushing the limit either from many considerations okay. uh, how how maybe how how easy it is to build um, the price yeah. it will get the end user price and of course i was i, I worked many years with micro precision so i have a very good uh, relationship with thomas and yeah. i always love the products um, but I, I just started i, I never mm. thought about developing a product and okay. becoming this i just started tweaking and playing and ideas and it's, all, it's always about the mid-range. So the first four inch mid-range that we have now in the lineup, yeah. that took two and a half years. Okay, yes. for the flap, the flap, yeah. Yes, development and at some point it was feeling ridiculous because I was spending a lot of <laughs> yeah. money and I knew it was my passion yes. but I realized this is getting good. Yes. Uh, and, and then I realized it has to become a, a brand, a product, and it has to have accompanying okay. Twitter, yes. Midbase, and the whole lineup. Also. So that was the, the beginning. So I never, I never really thought of myself as, as speaker designer. I never really had school yeah. for neither of things I do. Car audio, I, I finished University of Finance and Banking. <laughs> so I have nothing to do with car <laughs> audio, interior yeah. design. So from, from this point of view, self-taught. Okay. Yo. Always like work with the coding segment, also like car audio. Yes. In Indonesia market, we have uh, maybe less supercar owner that want to, I think, upgrade the car audio. What do you think? Is it possible that a supercar and then upgrade the car audio and then he can get a nice uh, car audio system in supercar? I think supercars are a very, very interesting opportunity yeah. in my opinion because the nature of a supercar yeah. is to be lightweight yes uh, and, and all the emphasis is about sportiness yeah. about the experience of driving so it, sound is always really bad almost always oh, really yes. bad yeah in whatever supercar you look so even if the final experience if we are going to do a sound system on one of those cars is not as amazing yeah. as one of our competition cars i think you can still keep the weight low and have a really really good result so uh, of course i think the the customers of, of supercars and hypercars are very uh, it's it's a step yeah. to get to that point of trust as soon as they see you have done a few and the trust is there i, I also have worked in yeah. romania with with supercars and the results are always amazing they don't expect this and also compared to the factory system mm. is a huge difference whereas if you take a, a much more bigger more luxurious yeah. uh, car then the difference we can make it needs to cost a lot to get to that point so supercars i think are it's really still good possible market. to get yeah? yes okay. yes i i, I think 
you guys should should go more in that direction. <laughs> yeah, because I think uh, the mostly of the supercar owner said my engine is already very loud, so I cannot listen any good car you, audio you, system. You need a, yeah, you need a sound system that can play also yes. a little bit louder. Louder, yeah. yes. <laughs> As a speaker designers, what is your biggest achievement actually? Yes, so looking at all the speakers and all the other manufacturers and listening to them and testing i i, I realize that nobody's do is going in one direction where where i had no idea why yes i always like the speaker that has huge amount of energy in the electromagnetic system and a lightweight moving mass and to me that felt very simple and straightforward so if you look at the at normal speakers in general and try to understand why not push the moving mass lower and why not push the magnetical system higher for me that's a, a system that is more lifelike sounding you get higher efficiency and the details come at you effortlessly yeah. you don't need to the, the details doesn't feel pushed or aggressive so this is something that i started looking at yeah. and of course i realized later why nobody does it? Because it's very, very difficult and extremely expensive. So uh, everything that I did during my lifetime, including interior design and so on, I was completely passionate by it and I try to not limit it. If you limit it by the budget, if you limit it by the size, if you limit it by weight or something, it's always going to be a compromise, not even box size or anything. So my, my goal was how to make the ideal, the perfect speaker. I had no idea it's going to be reproducible. I had no idea if the price is going to end up as something that somebody else yes. can, can buy. So I still remember the first prototype of the mid-range while looking at it and comparing to others. It was very ugly. Yeah. It, was, <laughs> it had um, some shims yeah. and all kinds of stuff to put it together yes. and glue and because we, I, I was only trying different ideas. Yes. And when, when, I, when I heard the sound and was looking at it and I had a few friends with me listening we always said yeah. nobody would buy this <laughs> nobody would buy yeah, this yeah. but how do we get the people yeah. to at least listen to, yeah. to it so this was the the first challenge to get to get the mid-range right and then to realize it's possible so i would say our mid-range compared to most normal speakers it at least double for the size it's at least double energy yeah. in in the electromagnetical field and also that the way the electromagnetic field is very even is very important and the, the moving mass is extremely lightweight for the size of the cone okay and then the the, the big challenge was to to produce a tweeter and a mid-base yes. that can match okay. the, the, the mid-range and while developing the mid-range uh, I, I got to a point where i really liked it then going to the tweeter side I went back and modified the mid-range yeah. a little bit and then the mid-base, so it was all complex. So a three and a half year okay. process until the, the final lineup was ready, what you, yeah, yeah. What you heard yeah. in, in your finals. And also, we have applied super small changes since then as well, because now the production is actually yeah. ongoing. I also heard that, I think your speaker is not using Spider. is it true? It is yeah. using Spider. no, oh, it is using Spider. Spider. but okay, it's, uh, our spiders are very, very... Uh, lossless. They, okay. they do not apply a lot of pressure. Oh, it's not or, spiderless, but it's no, okay. it's not spiderless. No. Uh, the idea, from my point of view, is that the sinus, the music, comes at a, as a sinus yeah. from the digital form into analog form, and the speaker needs to follow yeah. the shape of the sinus. As soon as you apply mechanical force to protect yeah. the speaker from moving, of course, the, the speaker will not be able to achieve the shape mm. of the sinus. So that's called dynamic compression yes. and a lot of normal products. Because, of course, it's a chain reaction. If you do not have enough electromagnetical force or the force is not evenly spread, then you always need to protect the speaker from not destroying. And this okay. I learned very well on my own. <laughs> because <laughs> the first uh, part, the first woofers we yeah. made they were always hitting the bobbin and destroying. So I wanted to make it loose and I, I love the sound, yeah. but as soon as you play a little bit louder than you should, then the speaker will get destroyed. Okay. So we had to go through 14 spiders yeah. to get to the final one that we have now, which manages to, to get all the characteristics we want to an X max of six millimeters. So the speaker, six millimeter movement, it's absolutely free of, of mechanical pressure or very low. 
pressure and then it becomes to protect so th this was the, the harder choice and if you remember looking at uh, the speaker yeah. in Salzburg yes. the, the spider is very very atypical yeah. we are, at least I have never seen that yes. type of spider before so okay uh, jadi Marian Gadaudi sudah mem melakukan riset ya speakernya itu hampir tiga setengah tahun ya jadi itu merupakan uh, resultnya dari proses development yang membutuhkan waktu yang panjang trial and error I think he already uh, spent maybe three or three and a half years ya for development and then this is the final uh, design for the speakers and uh, what are your goals in the future for the speaker design and technology? I think uh, no matter what This is my passion now and I, I spend so much time yeah. to understand it and I think there's still ways of, of pushing everything forward. So uh, it's always a big project, it spans for so much time, you want to have it come to an end, but now we get a little bit of fresh air, we see how the market responds. As far as now, it was very positive, including competitions where yes. we won in multiple classes. And of course, people who have listened to the cars are, are very much interested yes. in, in the product. So I think this will open the door for two things. One is to take all we learn from this time machine lineup and, and introduce it in such a way that we can, we can retain as much as sound quality and, and design ideas as possible into a cheaper way of producing okay. the speakers because for now the speakers have no consideration regarding cost so the speakers were produced to be as good as possibly can from at least my opinion and with my knowledge uh, and we we can try to keep all those ideas and, and introduce them in a way that, that the speaker can be produced faster and with cheaper materials where is possible without decreasing much of the sound quality and the other direction is uh, maybe go even crazier so we don't know <laughs> we're gonna test try if there is a way to if there is a way to, to find a little bit better sound than time machine we're gonna try so basically we can say this is still a handmade speaker Yes. Okay, yes. 100% handmade. Yes, 100%. Okay. Jadi ini speakernya untuk uh, time machine ini masih bisa dibilang sebagai handmade ya. Nanti in the future maybe bisa dibuat dipublikasi atau apa nanti kita akan lihat juga untuk perkembangan time machine ini dan ini sangat menarik karena ini merupakan mungkin uh, top of the line of the speakers I think. And then the best sounding speakers that I heard in uh, EMA Euro Final in Salzburg. For the last question, uh, maybe we can where can our viewers learn about your products or and then for the latest update? Um, we have our website mm. which we haven't updated too much okay. because the product was seen as a, a, a as a pre-launch yeah. so to say in, in Salzburg. We want to make a big event where we launch the, the product properly when production is ready and there is some stock and we have a demo car. Yeah. Uh, at least for Asia part is going to be a special event yeah. for, for this. Um, and of course we have the so the website is um, aimexclusive.com aimx aim aim from art in motion okay aim, art in motion okay aim, yeah aim exclusive exclusive okay. dot com, dot yeah. com okay and um, facebook and instagram is art in motion sweden yeah. okay um, uh, also just for our understanding regarding the, the the time machine name The idea behind it, and I guess you working with Hara Audio and with audio in general, when you have a really, really good sound system in yeah. front of you and you are able to tune it to perfection, when you when you sit and listen and close your eyes, for example, if you, if you insert a recording from the 70s, you will feel like you're in the room with the, with the singers. And that is, that came to my mind many years ago before I, I started building the speakers. And I realized, you know, it's a metaphor. It cannot be a real time yeah. machine, but part of our sense, it's already in the past. It's all, all the recordings that we have now are made in the past. So whatever we listen to, we are getting to that moment when the people have recorded the music. Oh, so that's why you call it time machine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a time machine for <laughs> For, for our hearing yeah. sense. We have the memory way. about our past then and listen to the music. Yeah? Yes, yeah. Yeah. those people were in the room playing that guitar yeah. and uh, using their voice. Bring up the memories. And so. the emotions and yeah, everything. Emotions. You relieve them like you would be there. So. Yeah. Okay. Jadi uh, Katernas ya tadi kita sudah berbincang panjang dengan Marian Gadau dan uh, produknya mungkin akan di launching nanti di Indonesia atau di Asia ya karena ini mungkin baru benar-benar 
uh, grass ya di uh, Eropa juga baru muncul kemarin kita sempat lihat di uh, Salzburg ya EMA, EMA Euro Finals dan saya juga berkesempatan mendengarkan uh, mobil dia ya ya so, sistemnya bagus banget dan nanti kita mudah-mudahan kita akan bisa mendapatkan produknya sudah tersepatnya ada di Indonesia oke okay, Marion thank you for your time and then it's a very nice to talk with you nice and we are looking you. forward to the speaker bye bye sure. <laughs>